All right, so today I want to talk to you about repairing security cameras. Now, I have one here. It's a digital watchdog DWC V1382 TIR. I got this camera, it's in a bunch of stuff that it is, and um, it didn't work, it was dead. It was There was no power to it at all. So, I uh, opened it up and I found here the main power board. Let's see if we can zoom into that. And as you can see, we know it's the main power board because that's where the AC comes in. We follow the power wires. So right here. We go into the board and the power is turned into what's usable for the camera. See it goes through there. Now, usually there's only a handful of components that'll go bad in here. Um, if we look right here, there's a micro fuse or nano fuse, and here we have three electrolytic capacitors. These have values of 47 microfarads at 50 volts. So what I first did was I tested the little nano fuse on the board there, and it showed good with my multimeter. I put the multimeter on continuity and tested it and it was beeping, so it was showing that there was good continuity. So I thought, okay, we'll change out the electrolytic capacitors. And to test these with a multimeter, you actually need to remove them from the circuit and then you test them. Um, I didn't bother with that, I just went and bought new ones. It was like 80 cents for three of them. So I did that. And uh, once I had them unsoldered, I tested them with the multimeter and they're all good. So I figured, oh shit, something else. Then I went again and I tested this fuse and it was bad. So I missed that the first time around and ended up changing the capacitors out for nothing. But anyways, there's new capacitors in there now, so it should extend the life. So I'm gonna change out that nano fuse. Um, but in the meantime, I'll probably just jump across it, which is probably not a good idea in case something shorts out. But anyway, now to make this work and to test my theory, what I did was I just shorted out the fuse with uh, a pair of tweezers like that. We jump across these two terminals right here, and we just touch them together so it's mimicking a working fuse. But um, I'll probably just solder a piece of wire on there for the time being until I can get another fuse. Um, can't really tell what value that is. We'll have to see if we can a little bit closer. It says IE2A, so I assume it's a 2 amp fuse of some kind. Um, so I'll have to replace that out. Now, like I said, I just jumped across it and we'll see if the camera works. So right now, power into the camera. Come back here a bit. As you can see we have power coming in here. The little trick is if you don't want your leads to short out, clamp one up on the wire there. <coughs> and now, uh, we'll see how I can set this up so I can catch my video. Okay, I have my little security test monitor over here. and sitting on top of this other monitor that I have to fix. Oh yeah, and there's another capacitor here. This one is a 400 volt, 100 microfarad. Um, that was in the main power supply, this Telco monitor. Um, so if you have one of these and it's not turning on, well, I believe this is the problem. I haven't yet tested it, I just pulled it off the board and it looks like there's this uh, goopy glue here that it overheated and melted. So I can see the glue holding this little transformer is still intact and it looks like a little shorted out spot but anyways that's a side note we'll get to that after um, yeah so now as we see the camera is actually plugged in and there's nothing happening so capacitors are good now we're just going to go ahead and short out this little fuse and there we go this is a cool one because it has a um, like an auto focus or a remote focus so using RS45 you could or zoom sorry Zoom and focus. So using RS45 uh, protocol like PTZ camera, you can zoom it in and out. And there's an on-screen display menu and all that good stuff. So there we go. It works. And that's all there is to it. So if you come across these cameras, you know, only a handful of things that can go wrong. Check the fuse and check your capacitors. Usually you can tell when these capacitors are blown is um, they'll start to bump up at the top the gas will build up in there and um, see this one kind of 
can't really tell. It kind of looks like it's bubbling up. And I don't even know if that's what the problem is. But let's test it. I was getting some weird readings off of it. And I was doing that. But let's do it again. Now, I have a digital multimeter over here. Back light on. Uh, move this shit to the side. Okay, uh, let's see if we can do this here. Okay, now the negative side is the side with the gray stripe and the. Uh, I'll have a minus sign or a minus square or something that look like that. That's the negative side. So, I'm going to take the caps off the probes and. What I find is easiest is um, see these little notches here on the probes, like that, and you just get the little side of the capacitor onto the notch and it'll kind of anchor itself there, so we'll try that. Um, another trick is keep one probe on the meter and you can hold them like that. But, um, we'll see if I can get it here with the camera. Um, ideally you want to have those clamp ones because you need to hold this for a couple seconds. I'm just kind of spread the probes a bit. The leads. I'm going to go in from the middle and hold out. So now first you'll see a nanofarad reading, and then we should see the microfarad reading in a minute. On this meter anyway, some will only show you microfarads. Um, or it'll say OL over limit if it's bad. And there it is. OL over limit. So, that will tell us that this thing's bad, but it's interesting that we're still getting a microfarad reading. Let's try it again. It's a bit of a fucking pain in the ass to hold these together, that's why I said it's best with the little alligator clampy probes. But, um, so we're getting a nanofarad reading of 2.348, and a microfarad reading is showing us an over limit. So with that, I'm assuming that this is bad. It's not picking it up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I guess it's safe to assume that this one's bad. Oddly enough, they didn't carry this at the electronics store, so I have to order it online. Probably. Any hujib. This is the um, power board, by the way. I'll put a uh, a note in the video notes or the description box of what the part number for this is. Um, I can see there's a couple other little capacitors on here. Um, MOSFET. Two on this side, two on this side. This is the high voltage side and the low voltage side, so 120 volts AC comes in from this side, gets transformed over to DC on that side. So that it's usable for the, uh, rest of the circuit on the monitor. And, uh, you can determine that this is the power board because obviously we have the transformers there. But um, power goes right into here, so that's your power board. If you're working on these and you don't know too much like I do, or you're just starting to learn like I am about these things, um, there you go. So if you know any more things about this stuff or you have any pointers, feel free to let me know. Leave a comment, send me an, an email or a message, and. I'd be glad to hear from you. Maybe I'll do a second video on the audio, but since I've been working on this all at the same time, we'll put it all together in one. And um, like I said, any of you know more about these things or you have any uh, tips or whatever, feel free to let me know.